An exciting medical breakthrough is a role 2020 has carried out for years. And to make sure that we don't give credence to frauds, we rely on ABC News medical editor, Dr. Timothy Johnson. But recently, he came to us with a story that sounds almost like science fiction. It involves the theory that electricity plays a very major role in the human body. It could revolutionize medical science. It might even provide a new way of treating cancer. Tim has the details and tells why we haven't heard of this already. We are always fascinated by the power of electricity, whether it is natural or man-made, electricity can be obviously dramatic and dangerous. Medical scientists sometimes are able to harness electricity for treatment or diagnosis. Okay, everybody get clear. Electricity can save lives by starting hearts that have stopped beating. It can also diagnose disease based on electrical impulses from the brain or heart. The use of electricity can also be more controversial, as in electroshock therapy for depression. It has long been known that electrical impulses are essential to the functioning of the brain and nervous system. But what if the electrical forces in the body are more extensive than that? What if all our tissues are part of a vast, previously unknown electrical system? And what if the same flow of electrons that light our lights and power our appliances could be harnessed to combat diseases, including cancer? In fact, a highly respected scientist who lives and works in Sweden in relative obscurity has developed such a theory. Incredibly, his work has remained a virtual secret. Part of the reason is that Dr. Bjorn Nordenstrom has chosen to work alone in unconventional fashion. But the biggest problem is that his ideas are so complex and revolutionary. So this is a, a new circulatory system, which is so uh, difficult for many to understand, because they say, why haven't we described, uh, we found that before? In recent years, Dr. Nordenstrom has become used to the skepticism of his scientific colleagues. However, he came to his electrical research with a record of accomplishments which are impressive. Dr. Nordenstrom is recognized as a brilliant pioneer in his field, diagnostic radiology. For example, in the 1950s, he developed fine needle biopsies to diagnose lung cancer. At the time, it was considered a revolutionary idea, but today it is used routinely throughout the world. He also pioneered in the 50s the techniques that led to the first x-ray pictures of the insides of blood vessels in the lungs. In the 60s, he was named chief of diagnostic radiology here at the world-renowned Karolinska Hospital. And three years ago, he served as chairman of the assembly that chooses the Nobel Prize winners in medicine. Dr. John Austin, a radiologist at Columbia in New York, says Dr. Nordenstrom's credentials are rock solid. Oh, yes. He says has not just impeccable credentials, but really extraordinary credentials. Without his past reputation, Dr. Nordenstrom probably would not have been allowed to take his theory about electrical forces in the body and apply it to the treatment of cancer. As it was, his colleagues sent him only patients who had failed other treatment. His treatment turns out to be remarkably simple. He attacks the tumors with a current running between two electrodes, one in the tumor and one outside the tumor. The treatment, including placement of the electrodes, is done with the patient awake. This film was taken five years ago during the latter stages of his experiments on patients. So we can start the treatment and we build up the voltage slowly. How do you feel? I feel fine. Good. Good. Don't you have any pain in the lung? No. There is in his first series of 20 patients with lung cancers, Dr. Nordenstrom's treatment produced a nearly 50% response for what Dr. Nordenstrom describes as otherwise incurable cases. And so there was a reduction in size or a... An Complete old, disappearance of the tumor. That persisted for up to three to five yes, years. Yes, yes. So you're saying that in 12 out of 26 cancers, yes. that happened. Yes. Reduction in size or elimination that persisted at least three to five years. Yeah. To understand Dr. Nordenstrom's theory in cancer treatment, it helps to understand his overall theory. Dr. Nordenstrom believes that the body is filled with electric circuits and that current travels through vessels and tissues just like they were electrical cables. The current can travel long distances through blood vessels or short distances through the walls of the capillaries into and out of surrounding tissues. 
When Dr. Nordenstrom places electrodes inside and outside the tumors and runs a charge between them, he believes he can manipulate these electrical forces to kill the tumor. Since all of Dr. Nordenstrom's original patients were considered incurable, it is not surprising that almost all have died since their treatment in 1978 and 79. However, three of his original 20 patients are alive today. Birgitta Carlson, a nurse outside Stockholm, had a gynecologic tumor which had spread to her lungs. Dr. Nordenstrom successfully treated four tumors in her lungs in 1978. This patient would definitely not have survived five years, five, six years, if nothing had been done. And she is in good health now, nine years after treatment. Another success is Marianne Lilia, who works at a travel agency in Stockholm. Here is her lung tumor before treatment. Here it is, smaller, four months after treatment. And here is her lung nine years after treatment with no tumor visible. In his method, I, uh, he could try to take it away without removing the lung. So uh, I, I prefer to, to have that chance. In 1979, one year after Dr. Nordenstrom started his electrical treatment of patients with lung cancer, he launched a project that would distance him from much of the scientific community. Instead of submitting his theory and treatment results to scientific journals, he began writing a textbook to explain it. I have written this book on biologically closed electric circuits. Dr. Nordenstrom bases his lectures, like this one at Boston's Beth Israel Hospital, on his book, which was completed in 1983. His decision to publish a book rather than a series of scientific papers meant that most of his colleagues would not take the time to review or criticize his work. However, Dr. Austin, who edited the book, defends Nordenstrom's approach. Well, this is, this is big stuff, and his answer is that the standard, and I think his answer is right, that the standard way that people do science and medicine is in small, discrete articles, five or ten pages to an article with very tight reasoning, uh, and that his theory is much too big, uh, that the right way to get it out is to put it out uh, as a whole. And I accept that argument. However, this approach means that Dr. Nordenstrom has trouble selling his theories to the scientific community. During a recent series of lectures in the U.S. this summer, he spoke mainly to small groups of radiologists, many of whom had never read his book or didn't understand his theories. Dr. Morton Glickman, a radiologist from Yale, did read the book because he was asked to write a scientific review of it. It took him a year to finish. And I really looked for holes in this because it was so off the wall. And I couldn't find any holes. Uh, by the end of the book, I was persuaded. I started skeptical like everybody else does. But it, it just was, was very careful, very thorough, complete, and uh, eminently persuasive. Doctors here at Yale are interested in Dr. Nordenstrom's theories. There is also interest in possibly developing a study of his cancer treatment technique at Beth Israel. However, so far, neither has committed to any research. In addition, several doctors in Italy have tried Dr. Nordenstrom's techniques on cancer patients. For the past year and a half, Dr. Giuseppe Gasso, an oncologist in private practice in Catania, has treated 30 patients with cancers of the lung, breast, mouth, and neck glands. We can say that this is a therapy that we have definitely found extremely satisfactory, and we are more and more amazed at the results we obtain. This is far from saying that this constitutes a miraculous therapy. We have to wait. We must be cautious and carefully evaluate the results. Outside of these small preliminary trials in Italy, Dr. Nordenstrom's technique still remains virtually unknown to the scientific world. That's why I like it. And Dr. Nordenstrom, who has gone it alone until now, admits that he needs help to pursue his theories further, but lacks both the funds and the manpower. Now I need more sophisticated people to work with me, particularly engineers, but also doctors. And so, Dr. Nordenstrom has decided to turn to China. Doctors in Beijing have invited him to set up shop in China where patients who would otherwise get no treatment will at least get some treatment, albeit experimental. And they want me to train Chinese people to do the treatment because they have four million cancer cases and they cannot take care of everything. The results of those studies could be significant. 
But for now, Dr. Nordenstrom remains a giant scientific question mark, and we are left only to speculate. If he's wrong, he at least will have stimulated scientists to look anew at electricity and biological systems. And if he's right, that electricity circulates in the body in the ways he talks about, then I think there's just no question that this is going to be one of the major discoveries of the entire century. Wouldn't it be remarkable if, if it really was a breakthrough? But you know, Tim, it would seem to me that anybody who had lung cancer would not want to run over and, and, and see this doctor. Well, first of all, he is not treating patients currently, so that would be a logistical mistake. More importantly, as we tried to make clear, this is very preliminary work. Only a few patients studied. He's really spent most of his time developing, developing his grand theory of electricity, not treating cancer patients. However, there are people starting to pay attention now. Uh, he's going to have some of his results published in a cancer journal. And I hope that he will get a hearing for his work, that people will start supporting his work in the scientific community because he has such a great reputation from past work. He deserves more support now, I think. Now, will China make a difference, the fact that he's going to be seeing patients there? Well, if they can develop a large series of patients treated in an early stage, I think that could really prove or disprove whether or not this is going to work for cancer patients. And so that's very important. And we will do a follow-up report one way or the other on his work. So it really is too soon now. Too soon now, but, but it's it may worth be something. hearing about. Exactly. So important. Thank you for telling us about this.